Welcome to Founders Metropolitan Community Church. We're so glad you chose to worship with us today. Before we begin, now is a good time for you to gather your bread and cup for communion. Also, it's a good time to start a watch party on social media so your friends can worship with us too. Service will begin momentarily. Would you join me now in our call to worship? God blesses us with the wisdom of many people. Some show up momentarily, while others a lifetime. It's true. Every person has a purpose. Some teach us, while others learn from us. I believe our spiritual journey, while in our human existence is to ask that God reveal God's purpose to us. It would be true then that part of our purpose is to let go so that we may continue to grow. Indeed, and in letting go, we don't resist God's teachings or lessons. We grow from their possibilities. It's a huge responsibility Yet God has made us worthy through Jesus our Christ. Amen. Now join us in our opening song. Would you pray with me this morning? Precious God, thank you for this time we have to be together on this beautiful day, this sunshiny day here in Los Angeles. I know there's some other we uh, weird weather around the world, but today it's beautiful here in Los Angeles, and we thank you for another day. We thank you for a Valentine's Day. We thank you for all that we have been blessed with. We thank you, God, because we know that you are with us. And we ask now that you will not only let us know it in our hearts, but let us feel it in our spirits. Let us sense your power and your presence in our lives in a mighty way today. And let us be blessed abundantly, we ask in the name of Jesus, our Christ, and all that is holy. Amen. Amen. I want to say welcome. We're so glad that you're here with us. If it's your first time with us today, well, welcome. We are very, very glad to see you with us. We hope that you will enjoy the service so much that you will be back every week. You will not want to miss one week of being in what I believe is the greatest church on earth. 
We also want to welcome those of you who are so faithful. You're here always. We can count on your presence, and we just want to say welcome. We're glad that you're here. I also want to welcome all of you uh, who are in the house today. We have a, um, a handful of people in the room. You can see the signer on the screen. You'll see a couple of other people on screen shortly. But we want to say all, welcome to all of you who are the crew that make this service happen online every single week. You are so faithful, and we just want to say we are glad that you are here. Thank you for being here. We have a few announcements for you today. Next Wednesday, that's three days from now, is Ash Wednesday. Now, we are uh, in the middle of a pandemic. Well, maybe hopefully we're on the end of a pandemic instead of the middle of a pandemic. But since we're having a pandemic, we are not able to meet in person the way we usually do. So we will have an Ash Wednesday service online at 7 p.m. It will be a Zoom meeting, so we'll be able to see each other. It's not going to be like our our regular Facebook Live page. You will be on the screen if you want to be. Of course, you can just call in. But we ask you to have a plate, we all, a glass plate, not a paper plate, a glass plate or china plate. And we also ask you to have a match and perhaps a candle. Um, those are going to be our holy elements that we bless and use to be able to create ash so that you can impose the ashes on your forehead at home. And we think you will uh, enjoy this time of gathering. It will be uh, a shorter service maybe than we would ordinarily have if we were in person, but we'll be able to interact a bit on the Zoom call. That link is in our newsletter and in our e-news. If you don't get that, well, you can request to get it, but you can also just go and click on it on our website, F uh, foundersmcc.org. It's not too late to get in pictures for this month. This is American Heart Month, and so we um, want to pay attention to people. Notice we have uh, a couple here, a couple of our members who are not even in California. We are so glad to have Harold and <coughs> um, De uh, Dennis. Uh, his name went right out of my head for a second. Uh, as you can see, we are celebrating Valentine's, and they're all red and and got a heart in the picture. So send in a picture if you haven't done so. Uh, you can do it making the sign of the heart with your hands, as some people have, or you can find another way to get a heart somewhere in your picture. Note also on Saturdays, we have a food bank here at the church. We are so proud of the work that our team is doing uh, there. Um, I can't remember. Can you tell me, Mark, how many we had yesterday? How many families? He wasn't here. Um, I know last week we had 80-something families, and we have been running anywhere from 80 to 160. I mean, we, we've had a lot of people joining us. We also are having more food come in, uh, not only um, from the food bank, but also from Food Forward. And so we have lots of fresh vegetables and so um, come out on Saturday morning and get some. We always, seems like we have some left over. You're welcome to make sure that you come and get some yourself. Um, but we try not to waste any. If there's any that's left, it gets taken to one of the open community uh, refrigerators and areas where people can come and pick up food. We try not to lose one bit of it. So thank you to our team that makes that happen every week. We also have something happening almost every night of the week. We have evening vespers on Tuesdays at six on our six on our Facebook page. It's about 15 minutes of music just to take a break from everything else that's going on and make the world stop for a few minutes so we can just have a few minutes of, of worship. On Wednesdays, we have Bible study with Pastor Lucia on the uh, Facebook page at 7.30 and also in Spanish at 7.30 with Reverend Alejandro, and that's on a Facebook video group chat. Uh, all of that information is in our e-news so that you can figure out how to get to each thing. On Thursdays, we have Pastor Pop-Up on a Zoom at 6 p.m., um, and 
soon after that, Reverend Alejandro at 7.30 and 7.45 uh, starts a bilingual rosary. So you can join him on that. And then I'm back on Friday evening with our evening vespers. Uh, once again at 6 p.m. for about 15 minutes of music. So join us. There's always something going on. And as you can see, we won't wait until Tuesday to start. This day, today, Sunday after church, we will have our um, hospitality time that starts at 11.15 here and it closes at noon. That Zoom link can be found at foundersmcc.org. It comes time for us to pass the peace to one another. Um, and we do this, uh, if you're on Facebook Live, you can type in your greetings to one another. And if you're on our website, you can check your attendance. This is a wonderful, wonderful time to greet each other and make a new friend. Speak to a stranger even. Make a new friend on Facebook Live today. This morning's first reading is taken from the second book of Kings, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12, the message version. Just before God took Elijah to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on a walk out of Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here. God has sent me on an errand to Bethel. Elisha said, not on your life. I'm not letting you out of my sight. So they both went to Bethel. The guild prophets at Bethel met Elisha and said, did you know that God is going to take your teacher away from you today? Yes, he said, I know it, but keep it quiet. Then Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here. God has sent me on an errand to Jericho. Elisha said, Not on your life. I'm not letting you out of my sight. So they both went to Jericho. The guild of prophets at Jericho came to Elisha and said, Did you know that God is going to take your teacher away from you today? Yes, he said. I know it, but keep it quiet. Then Elijah said to Elisha, stay here. God has sent me on an errand to the Jordan. Elisha said, not on your life. I'm not letting you out of my sight. And so the two of them went their way together. Meanwhile, 50 men from the Guild of Prophets gathered some distance away while the two of them stood at the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak 
rolled it up, and hit the water with it. The river divided, and the two men walked through on dry land. When they reached the other side, Elijah said to Elisha, What can I do for you before I'm taken away from you? Ask anything. Elisha said, Your life repeated in my life. I want to be a holy man just like you. That's a hard one, said Elijah. But if you're watching when I'm taken from you, you'll get what you've asked for, but only if you're watching. And so it happened. They were walking along and talking. Suddenly, a chariot and horses of fire came between them, and Elijah went up in a whirlwind to heaven. Elisha saw it and shouted, My father, my father, you, the chariot and cavalry of Israel. When he could no longer see anything, he grabbed his robe and ripped it to pieces. Then he picked up Elijah's cloak that had fallen from him. Returning to the shore of the Jordan, he stood there. He took Elijah's cloak, all that was left of Elijah, and hit the river with it, saying, Now, where is God of Elijah? When he struck the river, the river divided, and Elijah, Elisha walked through. This morning's second reading is taken from the Holy Gospel according to John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 3, and verses 18 through 19, the contemporary English version. Jesus said to his disciples, Don't be worried. Have faith in God and have faith in me. There are many rooms in my maker's house. I wouldn't tell you this unless it was true. I'm going there to prepare a place for each of you. After I have done this, I will come back and take you with me. When we will be together, I won't leave you like orphans. I will come back to you. In a little while, the people of this world won't be able to see me, but you will see me. And because I live, you will live. Hear what the Spirit says today. Thanks be to God. You are God in heaven and here am I on earth so I'll let my words be few Jesus
Give her a hand. Thank you, Michelle Burnett from our church in San Antonio, Texas, USA. We are so delighted we finally got to hear you sing. We've been working on it for a while, and we finally were able to get such a beautiful song and perfect for Valentine's Day. Jesus, I'm so in love with you. Amen? Well, it is Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. I don't know if you got any sweets around you or not. I got a box of chocolates this morning, or a box of sweets. I haven't opened it yet. Um, as soon as I walked into the church, I, I got some sweets from some sweet people. How about that? So um, maybe it's a good day to be sweet to others. It's also a good day for love stories, don't you think? Well, I have three I want to tell you about. Three biblical love stories that I want to tell you. That makes for a good three-point sermon, doesn't it? Well, we have three love stories. You may have noticed that I titled the sermon, Whither Thou Goest. Now, you, you have, some of you probably, or have been around long enough to have heard a song called, Whither Thou Goest. And it's been around for a while. I think even it was before I was even born. Um, but it is a song that has it's been very popular with, at weddings for many, many years. Whither thou goest, I will go. And it's also a scripture reading. And notice I left it in the King James version of whither thou goest because most of us don't speak that way these days. But I've noticed through the years as a minister, lots of times when I have conducted or officiated a wedding, whether it was same sex, or opposite sex weddings, they wanted this scripture read. And so I want to read this little bit of it to you today. Notice it starts out in Ruth chapter 1, verses 16 through 18, and again, the King James Version, which is what people request. And Ruth said to Naomi, now, I always get stuck on that part right there, because notice it's one woman speaking to another woman. It's one woman speaking to her mother-in-law, by the way. But hear, hear, hear what she says. Entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people. And thy God, my God. Where thou diest, will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. When she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. Now, those are pretty powerful words especially if you know some of the rest of the story, is you have Naomi who has two sons who have married wives, and Ruth being one of the daughters-in-law of Naomi. But both of Naomi's sons die. 
And so here is Naomi. Naomi's husband has died, so she's by herself, but she has her children there and their wives. And then both of her sons die, and so she's left with two daughters-in-law. So she instructs her daughters-in-law, go back to the land that you came from, because they were from a foreign land. They didn't even have the same faith. They worshipped different gods. What? A mixed family. They worshipped different gods. They had a different way of worship. Talk about mixed all up they were. But Ruth, uh, Naomi decides she's going to go back to her homeland, go back to her people, and live out the rest of her life. And she instructs her daughters-in-law to go back to their homeland. But Ruth won't go because Ruth loves Naomi so much. She says, oh, no, 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 no. Where you're going, I'm going. I'm not letting you out of my sight. You know, we have a special bond where I'll go to your people. I'll go, your land's going to become my land. Your family's going to become my family. And and your God's going to be my God. I'll do anything to be with you. Have you ever loved anybody that much? You would change your whole life, go live on a different continent maybe, go live in a different state. Some of you did that before you loved somebody and then you didn't love them after all and had to move back home. I've heard the stories, trust me. I get the crying phone calls sometimes. But Ruth goes with Naomi back to her homeland and while this is a beautiful, beautiful love story, that's not the end of the story. Because you see, Ruth was still young enough to bear children. So it meant she needed to be married again. Now think about this. This was something called the kinsman redeemer. So the next man in line would need to marry. And there was this whole protocol of who was next. Because the woman was there pretty much as property. And to keep the line, the the bloodline going. It wasn't about so much love between the man and the woman at that point, not with the kinsman redeemer. So Naomi is not only someone who loves Ruth dearly, but she creates a plan so that Ruth ends up married to a man named Boaz. And then she has children. Now you say, why is that important when she really loved Naomi? Well, it's important because Naomi was also the teacher. She was not just her mother-in-law. She was her teacher. She was someone that Ruth wanted to be in her presence at all times. Even though she was older, even though it was likely she was going to pass away before Ruth did, Naomi took it upon herself to really look after Ruth. And she had her married off to this very rich man named Boaz who later then, Ruth, has children and through that lineage, we have Jesus. Through that lineage, we have Jesus. Now think about that. All these generations later, hundreds of years later, we have Jesus coming from this marriage that Naomi has arranged. Now, I I, I mention that because it's very similar in some ways to the story that Mark read a while ago about Elijah and Elisha. In that story, you have the master teacher, the prophet Elijah. Many times people uh, um, refer to Elijah as the greatest prophet ever. Why? Because he prophesied some wonderful things and through him a lot of miracles happened. And he's also the one that would go up and prophesy against anything that wasn't godly. And everything that he prophesied came to pass. So when Elijah spoke, people listened. 
Now, sometimes they didn't want to hear it because they didn't want to hear what he had to say. They, they were like, ooh, he's prophesying against me or he's prophesying against our land. He prophesied, if you remember, you Bible scholars, he prophesied against King Ahab and Queen Jezebel, and that did not turn out very well for either one of them. So if, but people wanted, when it was a good word, they really wanted a good prophecy from Elijah because they knew they could count on it coming to pass. But woe unto you if it was a bad prophecy, if you were doing something wrong because you knew your time was limited, that whatever was happening was going to stop pretty soon. But here was the thing. Did you notice that several times Elisha goes to Elijah and he says, I want, I'm, he, he was his assistant. He's like, he, he's the uh, mentor and mentee. Elijah's the mentor, he's the mentee. He, he, he is studying to be a prophet of God. He has a calling, but he has to also study. So who is he studying? Well, the greatest prophet that ever lived, of course. If you're going to have something, you might as well go after the best, right? If you're going to learn something, you might as well go after the best teacher. So here is this young Elisha who is held captive by every word out of Elijah's mouth. And he just has such admiration and such love and such respect for what he sees God doing through him. Have you ever been attracted to someone and it was, it was their relationship with God? It was their spirituality you were really attracted to? You just wanted to be around them because you could sense God's power and presence through that person every time you were around them. And I'm going to tell you, I can identify with Elisha. In fact, people ask me, well, who do you think you are in the Bible? What Bible character are you? I say, well, I want to be. Here, if I could be, if I had my druthers, I don't know how you sign druthers, but if I had my druthers, I would want to be Elisha because my Elijah in my lifetime is Troy Perry. Way long before I met Troy Perry in person, I had read his first book, The Lord is My Shepherd, and He Knows I'm Gay. And oh my goodness, it felt like I, he had written my story. My story was so similar to his story. And he had come up in a Pentecostal church, and he had relatives, and he loved the, the way they worship and the emotional worship. And, and then when I find, I mean, I, I was like, oh my God, I, I want to be... I mean, I read not only what he was doing, he had started a whole denomination. I mean, think about that. He had not just started his own church in it and been something. That church had then grown and grown, and, and, and now it's a worldwide church. And, and, and here is this man that is so anointed by the Holy Spirit, and, and his life is even in danger through all of, of these threats that come on his life because people, not everybody liked the word he had and the prophesying that he had, but he had a message from God. He had a divine calling and nothing could stop him. Nothing. The pure gates of hell could not stop him. Fire couldn't stop him. Bomb threats couldn't stop him. The law couldn't stop him. The arrested, he, went, he was arrested. The bars couldn't keep him. I'm telling you, I, and I would read all of this stuff about Troy Perry and about MCC, and I had never set foot in an MCC, but I was like, I, I want what that man has. I want the kind of Holy Ghost that that man has. I want the kind of anointing that that man has. And oh my goodness, when I finally got the chance to meet him, it was way bigger than my expectations. When Troy Perry walks into a room, it's like the air changes. I, I don't know if we've ever told you that, Troy. I know you're watching, and you didn't ask me to say any of this. He didn't know what my sermon was today. But I'm going to tell you that when he walks into a room, the very air seems to change. And there is a presence you not only know that a person, Troy, is in the room, a man, Troy, is in the room, a human, Troy, is in the room, you feel some kind of spiritual change in his presence. And I used to stand in awe of him, I still do, but I, as, 
as an early MCCer. The first chance I got to meet him, oh my goodness, I was so excited. And afterwards, I really did want to be Elisha. I was like, oh my goodness, Lord, I want to preach like that man preaches. I want to feel the power of God like that man feels the power of God. I want when I walk in the room that people know that I have been in touch with the Holy Spirit and that I have a word from God. I wanted that kind of power. I'm still working on it. I I know I'm not there yet. But just as, and here was the other thing. I said, Lord, I don't want to wait until Troy Perry dies because I may very well die before Troy Perry. I'm I'm talking like 30 years ago I'm talking about. 30 years ago I said, God, I don't want to wait like Elisha had to wait until Elijah left. I don't want to wait until then because I might die before Troy. But I want the mantle. I want the cloak that that man has. I want that kind of spiritual wrapping that Troy Perry has. That's what Elijah had for Eli- Elisha had for Elijah. That's what Elisha had for Elijah. He wanted what Elijah had. And sure enough, sure enough, it took a fireball out of heaven to make it happen, but it happened. Here was the thing. When that cloak or mantle fell from Elijah, Elisha had wanted it for a long time, but he still had to go pick it up. It was still up to him to go get it. It was still up to him to take on that ministry and realize his calling and to continue that legacy Just like Naomi through Ruth on down to Jesus had continued a legacy that started long ago. Elijah through Elisha started a legacy of prophet after prophet after prophet. That mantle being passed down over and over and over again so that the Spirit of God. Talk about love. I mean, Elisha said, I'm not taking my eyes off of you. He's because... The prophecy was this. Elijah says, if you see me, when it happens. And three times, did you notice three times, he tried to walk away from Elisha. He tried, he said, well, I've got to go over here, so you can just wait here. And Elisha says, oh, no, 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 not on your life. I'm not leaving your presence. I am going to get what I want. I'm keeping my eyes on you. Well, what if nothing happens? Well, At least I get to keep learning. At least I keep being in your presence. It's not a waste of time at all. Well, you have another love story in our second reading today from the New Testament. We have Jesus, who knows that his time is short on earth, telling his disciples, telling his mentees, Jesus the mentor, telling his mentees, Jesus the teacher, telling his students, I'm not going to be able to stay with you in person much longer. My time here is very short. But don't worry. First of all, I may leave you in person, but I will come back and get you. Second of all, while I'm gone, I'm going to send my spirit, and you're going to always know that I'm with you. No matter what life brings your way, I'm going to be with you. Now I'm going to tell you, that's kind of true love, isn't it? God so loved the world. Did you hear that part? God so loved the world that God sent Jesus to us. And Jesus then, knowing his time is short, says, And I love you so much, I'm going to make sure that you not only know in your head that I love you, But I'm sending the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, my Spirit, back to you that will live not only with you, but will live in you. That's one of the reasons I pray what I pray. I prayed at the beginning of this service. God, help us not only to know in our hearts, not just by faith, it's not just a knowing that God is with us. But like Troy Perry grew up and I grew up, Let us feel, 
let us have that tangible legacy of the Holy Spirit. Because you see, when Jesus said that to those disciples, it wasn't just to those disciples. It was for all the disciples that have come, and here we are over 2,000 years later, still being discipled, still listening to the words of Jesus, still feeling that love of Jesus. You see, it's not just about us loving God. It's about God loving us. It's about us receiving that love. It's about us receiving that cloak, that mantle that fell from heaven, that Elijah let go of the cloak. It's just it fell out of heaven just like the Holy Spirit was poured out of heaven for all of us so that we have this opportunity to be covered, wrapped up in the Holy Spirit, in the very presence of God. Through Ruth, the legacy was left to bring us Jesus. Through Elisha, we have more spirit than anybody could even imagine, than the greatest prophet that ever lived. And through Jesus, we have that same Holy Spirit, the legacy of that spirit poured out for all of us. Three love stories. Each where the person may have died, but the love didn't. The love never left. Each where the person had to go to the other side, but we've been left with a promise that we will never be left alone. And we don't have to just know it. We can have the tangible feeling of the Holy Spirit that God is with us and in us. And we have that promise. That's that same word of prophecy, that same kind of Elijah prophecy. I will be with you always. Always. Whither thou goest, Ruth said. Whither thou goest, Elisha said. Whither thou goest. Talking to us. Jesus said. Let's keep our eyes on the one that will leave us that tangible spirit and let us walk and be cloaked into that spirit and feel every moment of every day the love that is the greatest love story of all, that Jesus loves us. Amen. Today, I do the games to play. I thought I knew the way. Life was meant to be. Will you get along?
cup as we begin this time of communion celebration together. As you know, we have this candle, and as we center around this table of remembrance, we pause to remember the candle that burns here for all those stricken in the COVID pandemic, the sick, the mourners, the health care workers, the unemployed, the hungry, and the just plain frustrated. Now would you pray with me? Oh God who never leaves us because wherever we go there you are. The romance of your universe is always fresh and we fall in love with you every day. In love with you our hearts break at the sickness in body and spirit that grips our world, at the untimely loss of loved ones, at the systems that make some of us vulnerable, at the habits that make others of us complicit, at the fear and rage that keep us divided, at the despair that discourages us from renewing relationships. In love with you, our hearts are filled by friends who walk beside us even when we're apart, by lovers and families who have nurtured us, by teachers who have guided us, by prophets who have challenged us, by the power of your spirit that amazes us, by the love that overcomes all. May our ongoing honeymoon with you be blessed with tender faithfulness, now and forever. Amen. Friends, at Founders MCC and MCCs around the world, we celebrate and share an open communion. That means you don't have to be a member of this church or any other church to come to the table of God. The table of God extends to wherever you are, this table, your table, wherever you are. 
our many tables and this table now become one, one table where no one is excluded. As part of the priesthood of all believers, everyone gathered around this one table made of many tables is invited to join us as celebrants at the feast of God. On the night Jesus was about to walk alone, he left some of himself with us in a piece of bread. And he lifted it as we all do right now. If you'll lift your bread with me. And we bless it and break it as he did. And we share it together saying, this is Christ's body broken for us to remember Christ's presence we do this God consecrate this bread as it becomes in our hearts an eternal companion for whither we goest you will go thank you for making us Christ's body let us consume Likewise, after supper, Jesus promised to remain with us in a sacred cup that he lifted as we do together now. And we bless it now as he did and share it together saying, this is Christ's blood offered to us. To hold on to Christ's presence, we do this. God, consecrate this cup as it becomes in our hearts the lasting friendship of Christ. For whither we goest, Christ will go. Thank you for making us Christ beloved. Let us consume together. Let us pray. God, we are filled in body, heart, and soul. Thank you for bringing us together around this table made of many. Thank you for living in communion with us. Amen. Today, because it is Valentine's Day, we have a tradition around here. We offer a blessing of relationships. So I know that because of um, COVID, we don't, we're not able to all come up and gather around the altar and bless like we usually do. But um, as I asked you last week, uh, if your honey lives with you, um, then you can just maybe take their hand and love on them a little bit while we pray. If they don't live with you, maybe you have them on the phone or on a Zoom call so that you can join in this time of blessing together. And perhaps it's not even exactly a romantic relationship. Maybe there are some other special love relationships out there that you would like blessed. 
Let's take just a moment and bless these relationships on this special day. God, we thank you for all of those who have enjoyed being in a long-term loving relationship. I was reading where someone this week is celebrating their 50th Valentine's Day together. We thank you, God, for those wonderful, enduring relationships. We thank you for the romance that still blooms today in 2021. We thank you, God, because the, we know love never fails. We know that love is enduring. Just as we preach today about three different types of love and relationships, the one thing that has endured through all of those is the love. That love still endures today. So we ask you to bless all of these who are coupled up or have these special romantic love relationships. We ask you to continue to let the newness, the freshness of that love grow every day. Let them be just as giddy today as they were whenever they started or they met each other. Let them even do something silly today. Just silly love. And enjoy each other. Enjoy. Because we're reminded today of that special time of meeting and getting to know one another that has led us to be together today. For those who have other kinds of love relationships that are not necessarily romantic, we pray that you will bless those relationships, help them to grow, help them to be nurtured, mostly spiritually, by your spirit let those relationships continue to be blessed and grow. We pray for those relationships that maybe aren't such good relationships, God, that one of two things happens. That either the people turn those relationships around and decide we're in it. We're going to make it work. And they really work on it to make it right and to have a, a good relationship. Or if it's destructive and toxic and it can't be fixed. That God, they choose to just love each other enough to let each other go. So that they don't continue hurting one another. Now God, thank you for all of our relationships, whatever they are. Thank you for the, especially today because it's Valentine's Day. Thank you for all of the romance that's in the air. I thank you, God, that even driving to church and driving home, we get to see. I saw people out last night when I was going home from church. People walking hand in hand down the street. People walking with a single rose or walking with a heart, a box of chocolates. And God, I just thank you. I know some people don't like it when they're single and it reminds them that they are still single and God, I hope that they can find what I have found, a joy even in being single. Because, God, I have a love relationship with you, and I have a love relationship with my friends. I have a love relationship with my family, and I have a love relationship with my dog. And, God, most of all, I have a relationship with all of those around me every single day. So whatever our situation, God, help us to reach out and find the true love, the true love of our lives, which is you. We ask in the name of Jesus our Christ and all that is holy. Amen. Amen. Now join us in our closing song.
I am Jenny Nichols. I am your board member in service this morning. And I have also been given the um, title of the Poet Laureate of our Board of Directors. And in that spirit of that title and in the spirit of St. Valentine's Day, this is my offering. Roses are red, violets are blue, it's easy for your contributions on PayPal, and for that, we thank you. You can go to our website and click on the top red bar to make your to offer your contributions and your tithes and offerings. And a little bit further down on that same page, you will also find another red bar. If you have not yet been able to um, pledge an amount for the calendar year 2021, you can go ahead and click on that and pledge whatever God is leading you to, ple to pledge, whatever your heart is able to pledge. And for that, we thank you for this church community. Thank you and the ministry that we provide because of your tithes, your offerings, and your contributions are able to provide. Thank you so much. Just before I do the benediction, um, I'm, I'm going to add to Jenny's. Um, I, I can't do the poetry like she does. I'm going to go ahead and tell you. She is our poet laureate. Thank you for that. Um, I forgot to remind her, but this is the second Sunday, and on the second Sunday we have a second offering, second Sunday, second offering for building fun. So when you go online, you, can, you don't have to do it twice. If you, you go to make your uh, PayPal online, you can, when it says the reason that you are giving today, you can put how much you're giving in the regular offering and how much you're giving in the building fund. Uh, you can do all of that right there on PayPal. Just type in the amounts and what each one is for, and um, our treasurer will make sure that it goes where it's supposed to be. So thank you for that. Um, would you one more time pray with me? God, thank you for this time we've had together in worship. Thank you for your blessings on us. We ask you today on this special Valentine's Day to bless each one of us. Help us to go out and love one another. Help us to see love stories all over the place. They're not all romantic love, God, but help us to love the people around us. Reverend Alejandro challenged us last night at our interfaith service to find 10 people as we go about this week to love. Find 10 people to love. He said we may not even be able to speak to them. It may be someone in line at the store. And they may not even hear us when we say I love you, but in ourselves help us to zero in some people and love them and say I love you because God has put love in my heart. And that raises their energy up. Maybe someone's having a bad day and they need to hear that they are loved. Maybe someone is being alone and they need to hear that they are loved. And especially for those of us who are in romantic relationships, help us to be able to tell that person, those special people in our lives, to say, I love you and mean it. God, we ask that you will be with us as we go about our week. Continue to touch us through this COVID event. Bring healing to our land and help us to move forward. Help us to move upward and let us be a blessing everywhere we go. In the name of Jesus and all that is holy. Amen. Amen. Now, join us again for our hospitality time. I believe it's coming back up on the screen, foundersmcc.org, and we'll see you shortly in hospitality. God bless.